Yeah. We're back here at the weekend sports buzz. Myself, Tyler Boyd, Kelly Patrick. Give us a shout, 384-1450, the Oxmoor Ford Lincoln Buzz Line, which we are going to go straight to right now because we've got our guest on the line from Kentucky Sports Radio, Matt Jones. Matt, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you boys? You know, we're doing great. It's an ugly Sunday morning here in the city, but it's a sports day. We're March Madness. Even if Kentucky's not in it, I'm still okay. Yeah, it's been. Uh, this has not been the most exciting week in the world for Kentucky fans. Going back to Robert Morris loss and then looking like Louisville's probably going to win the whole thing, which is very depressing. But uh, they, we did get Julius Randle, so that makes people think that uh, maybe the Cats will win it next year and keep it in the state for three straight years. I'm already ready to give it to Louisville this year, which maybe that's just my pessimism, but, man, they look good yesterday. I'm right there with you. I tweeted it out right after Louisville's victory over Colorado State. Uh, I'm not going to lie, that team looks very good. I think everybody else around the area would totally agree. That defense is just ridiculous. You have the pressing going on, the Patino-style defense. Everybody knows about it. Uh, just, we'll just get right into the, a little bit of March Madness with you, Matt. How's your bracket looking right now so far, and what have you just thought of the overall slate of the tournament? Well, it, it's been gone pretty much how I thought. I mean, there have been a couple. I mean, obviously, nobody gets every game right, but there was some of the big storylines that have happened in the tournament were things that I sort of foresaw. I mean, I had Harvard beating New Mexico. Nice. I had Gonzaga losing to Wichita State, in part because I thought those were the two most overhyped teams all season. It's really easy to build up great records when you don't play great competition. And what always happens with Gonzaga, especially, is that they'll play three or four games a year against good teams. They'll win two or three of them, and then people will try to convince themselves that they're one of the best teams. But what makes a great team is not three times a year getting up against a good team, but playing the middle-of-the-road teams in hard conferences. You know, so what made Louisville one of the best teams is not the fact that they beat Syracuse two out of three times. It's the fact that they play Notre Dame or the fact that they play Marquette and they win those games. And Gonzaga doesn't play games like that. And so what ends up happening in the tournament is in the second or round, usually, or the Sweet 16, they will play a team like that. And Wichita State was kind of like that. And they lose. And that's pretty normal. Um, Georgetown, I never, ever believe in. That's a, a general rule of mine, and that showed well. I picked Florida uh, Gulf Coast. Now, I still think not a lot has changed. I think there's six teams that can win it, and they're all six still in the tournament. Louisville, Indiana, Miami, Michigan State, Duke, uh, and Florida. And until one of those teams gets beat, I think they're all going to go to the Sweet 16. Then I don't think there'll be a surprise until one of those teams goes down. Now, I will say the Harvard pick on your side, that was very impressive. I was right there with you on the Wichita State taking down Gonzaga. I, I just never believed in a number one Gonzaga. I think they should be a 7 to 12 seed at all times to be good. Uh, so, yeah, I'm right there with you on that. Uh, but one team that killed me, NC State. I should have never trusted in Mark Godfrey. It just never fails. Uh, that's the. But other than that, my yeah, I missed that one too. I missed that game, Mark, because NC State last year went to the Elite Eight. Yeah, I, I thought they'd win. I thought they'd be Temple, but they didn't. You know, obviously, uh, but I, I saw Indiana beating them, so it doesn't it doesn't kill you. You know, the thing about it, college basketball, even when people talk about parity, they're right that there's parity. Bad teams can beat other bad. teams. But there's never parity at the top. One of the best five teams always wins it. I mean, I think 19 of the last 20 years, I've picked five teams in the end of the tournament, and one of those teams has won. The only year that it didn't happen was when Arizona won in 97. So there's parity, but not really. Eventually, one of the best five teams wins the title. Now, Matt, obviously we're right here in the heart of it. We have the Louisville Cardinals who, like you said, at least on paper for what that's worth, they look great right now, look like a – possibly the leading candidate to win the championship. Kentucky's obviously, you know, having a, a, a down year. Indiana's doing real great, too. Um, but to look at the college basketball tournament, the NCAA tournament, from a little bit more of a distance, um, everybody's always looking for the great storylines. What do you think of my hypotheses that it's either Marshall Henderson or Russ Smith who are kind of the faces of the NCAA tournament right now? What do you think of that? Well, Russ Smith is a face in Louisville, and if they win the title, he'll become the face. But right now, Russ Smith could walk down the street of any major city and go unknown. I mean, the story is right now Marshall Henderson, probably. I think Rick Pitino is a story. In college basketball, the coaches are usually the story. And Rick 
Pitino is a dominant personality. So I think right now you're probably talking Rick Pitino and Marshall Henderson. If he can win today, if Ole Miss can win and get to the Sweet 16, and you know then they would play Wichita State, he could really become a huge superstar. And, and But it re, it'll require a win today because they need to beat LaSalle. And, uh, he also needs to learn to cover bridge. He's got to walk that fine line. I mentioned this on the blog. He needs to be Charles Barkley, but don't be Dennis Rodman. And there's a difference. I mean, there's a difference between that being outspoken and fun and being a jerk. I think he hurt himself with that thing where he sort of tweeted at the fake Ryan Arrow account. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, Started talking. That that is that's a diff, that's the difference. I mean, between being fun and a jerk, and he's got to walk that line. But I think he will. Uh, I think that I, if they win today, and I, I can't really get a read if they win because they're so inconsistent. But if they win today, the then yes, I think he's going to be the face of the tournament until you get to the final four. And once you get to the final four, it's about who can win it. And I think then Patino will be. I, I think the final four is still going to be uh, Louisville, Indiana, Florida and then some team out of the West, probably Ohio State. And at that point, it'll kind of be back to the coaches and, and, and what it normally is. Matt, you kind of addressed my next question there. Today at 6-10, Minnesota plays Florida. Do you not give Minnesota a chance against Florida? No, I don't because I think – well, I mean, look, Tubby has owned Billy Donovan over the years. When Tubby was at Kentucky, Kentucky beat Louisville – or excuse me, beat Florida – like seven straight years. Yes. Now, then he got his Joe Kim Noah team, and that team dominated Kentucky. But before that, he can tell me owns him. Now, this is different, though. I, I really like Florida. I think Florida's been under uh, appreciated all year, mainly because when they lose, they lose badly sometimes, like they did to Ole Miss, like they did against Arkansas, uh, even like they did against Kentucky when they finished poorly in that game. But they're still good. And they're such a tough matchup for teams that don't know them. Uh, and I think they'll run over Tubby today. Uh, the, what will be interesting against them is that they will uh, eventually play Kansas if Kansas makes it. I think Kansas could lose today to North Carolina. But if they do make it, I, I think that'll be a good matchup. And for me, it's all about trying to figure out how can Louisville lose. So for me, the five teams that can beat Louisville, I just want them to keep winning so that Louisville has to play somebody that can eventually beat them. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm right there with you. I'm definitely right there along the lines of that one. I have actually out of the West, I know you said Ohio State, I have Arizona. I just felt like everything was going to fall into place for them to make that return to the Final Four first time, I believe, since 1997. I, I could see that happening. Again, Matt Jones, uh, Kentucky Sports Radio, at KY Sports Radio on the line right now. I wanted to kind of ask you a little bit about Kentucky, obviously. The guys that – have said they're going to return, like a Cauley Stein, a good one. Uh, Harold, possibly, he can't really transfer. Do you see most of this team back for 2013, or do you maybe see a guy or two transferring out? I'd be surprised if Ryan Harrow's back. I mean, again, that's my. I, I, I just it's hard for me to imagine that that's going to end up working out. So I think that that was a bad fit from the get go. He's got two more years to play. I, I just don't know that Kentucky is the right place for him. Now, I don't know where he goes go to another Division One school and play. I could see him going maybe to an NAI school. I think he would do really well there and still have a chance to have a, a career playing basketball somewhere. But I, I just don't know how it works in Kentucky. As far as the rest of the guys, I mean, I, I think Alex Boyfriend and Archie Goodwin, I think, will both definitely be back. Willie Cauley-Stein, I think he wants to come back, but there's some pressure on him to leave. Uh, I hope he comes back because he, I think, can be a top Six, seven pick next year if he comes back and improves, um, but I, I don't. I don't think that's for sure yet. Kyle Wilcher will be interesting. I, I had never heard all year that he was considering transferring. Then there's been some rumors. I think all that stuff will clear up next week. I mean, Cal meets with the players on Monday and Tuesday. I think we'll have a better notion by the end of next week who's back. I'm not going to say it doesn't matter, but I don't know that it matters a ton. With all these guys, I think Kentucky could use all of them. But if they lost them, I don't think there's a huge problem. The one they'd really like to have, though, is Willie Colley's time. I think he would be the starting center next year. And I, I think with him, uh, that team is, is scary. So I think he's the one that, that probably the coaches would be the most hoping will uh, will come back. As I am. Matt, we really appreciate you joining us this morning. Uh, thank you very much. Have a great rest of your weekend. Enjoy the games today.
You too. Have fun, guys. Thanks. Appreciate it. Again, Matt Jones, KentuckySportsRadio.com, uh, t- d- 1080 WKJK, uh, talk radio uh, Monday through Friday, 10 to 12. Check him out. Everybody already knows that, but throwing it out there. He's a great guest. Appreciate him coming on again. We, we had him on back in our basement days. Decided to get him back on for the Moodle March Madness breakdown from h- get his thoughts. Let's go ahead and hit our break, though, Kelly. Uh, we'll be right back. More from the weekend sports buzz. <laughs> 